Hi everyone, welcome back to our final episode of the Colorism Umbrella. My name is Helena. And I'm Shibomi. Today we will be talking about colorism in the media and the different treatments people face because of it. The representation of light-skinned women differs from dark-skinned women. Light skin is more desired than dark skin. Um, according to a study done with black college women, the women noted that they often received colorist messages in the media, specifically from R&B music videos where the love interests were always light-skinned. Um, they also received colorist messages from television shows such as Blackish and My Wife and Kids, which were shows that highlighted light-skinned love interests. Um, one of the women in the study noted a switch in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, where the actress for Aunt Viv was switched for a lighter actress. And I think that really goes to show how colorist this industry really is, to think that like they could just add a lighter skinned actress and hope that nobody would notice right. the difference. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? I just think like when that happened, it was just, I mean, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is just like eight. It was just a huge, but it's, it's not a, is it a sitcom? Yeah. It's a sitcom. And it's like, it was just a, a huge show at the time. And it's just like, even if you need to replace, like, there are many actresses who could have replaced Aunt um, Viv in a way that would, you know, of course, everyone is going to know because, of course, not all black people look alike, which people <laughs> think. But, you know, I feel like they could have done better. It's like, there, it's just, there was such a huge difference in the complexions that I just feel like they knew better. And I just feel like that's their way of showing, like, their mindset of what they perceived as was, you know, beautiful. And honestly, I would say I give the show props because at first they did cast a darker skin on Viv, like the original um, actress. But the fact that they now changed her to somebody who was like completely like no resemblance at all just shows that they were still stuck in their like old ways. Maybe they just gave that... Um, darker skin maybe they first casted a darker skin on viv just to like maybe be different but they kind of messed up what they did you know yeah by doing what they did yeah. so yeah all that progress gone mm -hmm. um and going back to the study um i want to add something real quick so the women in the study well one of the women in the study noticed that even the light-skinned love interests they were always like a typical type of light skin in the R&B mm -hmm. music videos. So like they had like a loose curl pattern. They had like uh, small noses, like just more Eurocentric features. Mm -hmm. So even the light skin women in this study always knew that there was like a right light skin versus like a, just a general way of being light skin. Right. And I think that just like goes to show that, I don't know, like, when lighter skin people, like, people know what they're kind of looking for. It's like, maybe they think that they're the prize because they have this. But it's like, I feel like everyone is a prize. There's enough prize. There's enough, like, room for everyone. So mm. I definitely agree with that. Like, the lighter, um, the looser uh, hair, what is it, texture, looser yeah. hair pattern. Yeah. So I definitely see that all the time. We really associate, like, looser curl patterns with like being more beautiful you know and I feel like when we see like if there's a lighter skinned person who has like very like maybe 4C hair which is more coarse which has a lot of shrinkage there she still has some type of like negative like mm -hmm. association because it's not really it's not closer to like the you know expected features right so, Shibomi, how have you noticed the way light-skinned women are represented in the media? Um, one thing that I noticed is that women with lighter skin get treated way better. And not just like, oh, a physical treatment, like, oh, I'm going to get you this. But more of like, I'm going to give you this opportunity because I think that you're better because of your appearance. But I feel like they just get more screen time on films and they are almost always the protagonist in the film like never i won't say never but rarely do we see people who are lighter skin as portrayed as like the evil woman you know it's always the darker skin woman she's evil she's she's this she's that just in a negative light and i just feel like lighter i mean research has shown that lighter skin women always get roles before darker skin women which is why we always see that there are 
more lighter skinned women playing these roles than darker skinned women. Like I'm sure we've seen so many examples where it's always a lighter skinned person. And then if there's a darker skinned person, it's just like a, oh wow. Like, you know, it's, it's just not as common. Right. And then one thing I also remember is when there was a movie based on the life of Nina Simone and she's a darker skinned woman and the hiring committees casted Zoe Saldana and Zoe Saldana is a lighter skinned woman. And it's like, Nina Simone, you want to honor this woman with, you know, by making a movie about her, showing how much, you know, just appreciating her. And then you, I, I feel like it's a slap in the face. It's, it's disrespect to cast someone who looks nothing like her. Like your features don't even have to look this, but I just feel like having a darker, just, you know, having someone who's darker, it's like, there was just like a huge gap there, a huge difference in the way that they looked. So I think that's one thing that like, just shows how Hollywood is. And then also in a study conducted by Catherine Knight Steele titled Pride and Prejudice, Pervasiveness of Colorism and the animated series Proud Family, she found that the industry relies heavily on colorist notions when dealing with both beauty and socioeconomic status. So I think this is huge, just the Proud Family, a huge, 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 huge show for black people for, you know, back then when, what is like, it's a kid's show. So I think it just, it's interesting because the um, researcher of this study just highlighted how each of the characters had a very, like their role was very determined based on their skin color. So the lighter skin characters like Penny, her mother, her frenemy in school, La Cienega, like they all were positive, had positive traits to them. Everyone wanted to be their friend. They were seen as more, her mom was seen as more wealthy and just, you know, better than her husband who would, uh, and her husband and all the other darker skin characters. Um, what's her name? Dijonet is Penny's best friend and she was dark, way darker than Penny and similarly to Penny's dad, like their complexion was kind of like the same. And I just, the study really made me realize how much like they played into colorism. They had the blue sisters who were like the gross sisters who were blue and they were so like, they just tried to like associate their, um, their energy, their ne the negative aspects of them with their skin complexion. So they were mean bullies. So Oscar Proud, who's her dad, he had very, I would say he was always seen as like the joke, like he could never be serious. Like I said, her friend, all the guys, she wanted all the guys, but none of the guys wanted her. Of course, the guys wanted all the people who we expect them to like, you know, so it just goes to show how they really, that division right there, the research really shows each character and just brings a lot of light to what we are studying. Helena, how do you see dark skin represented? Well, I rarely ever see it represented and when, when I do it's not always in a positive light and usually the dark skin characters like if they're a main character it's usually like their entire storyline is just about them being dark skin and not really like exploring their other parts of identity or different struggles that they might be going through and like their characters are never really fleshed out so yeah, and if it's not that, then like they're criminals or they're hypersexualized or they're enslaved or mm -hmm. like it's it's never just a positive dark skin representation. You know right, what I mean? right. Um, so what do you think about all of that? I just find it interesting. Like we often see that one dark skin character like there's or a handful of them it's just this recycle they recycle a lot of the uh, dark skin characters and i noticed that they're almost always like portrayed as the maid the house help they're secondary characters they're never the main character the protagonist the beautiful luscious person that like 
all the guys are like running after it's like always somebody else so i just that's just one way that i see darker skinned women represented and it's like it makes you think are do white people not take care white women not take care of you know people's children mm -hmm. so it's like darker skinned women are just always have this like connotation i wouldn't always say it's negative but it's just not inclusive like mm -hmm. we need to see that they're they prosper they're um they're doing well just you know they're wealthy right. just different things other than the stereotypes that we see them in so i just feel like they could do a better job with that like viola davis like we all know like she's the one black like yeah. older woman that we always like see and i just know that there are so many other women who are trying to get into acting or who are in acting but are denied these roles because they're um because of their you know skin complexion so i just feel like they're just put at a, at a disadvantage and to add on to that about like recycling the same dark skin actors i feel like the same goes for like light skin actors as well that part it's always like yara shahidi or amantla stenberg and like nothing against them they're very Zendaya. talented people right Zendaya. like they're all talented actors it's just that there needs to be more inclusivity it can't mm -hmm. just be the same light skin women in every movie and every tv show right so um, what effects do you do the stereotypes of dark skinned women and light skinned women have on these women and what mindset or beliefs does it give to others? Um, lighter skin what do I think? I think that lighter skinned women get all the benefits and darker skinned women feel like they need to look like them or they tend to feel discouraged because it's like if you're always denied something because it's given to the priority, then you're gonna feel like like there's something wrong with you there's something wrong with the way that you look so i believe that light-skinned women have it easier and because they're not the you know the last resort and i'm not saying that they don't face struggles of their own but dark-skinned women definitely have it harder and in reality it seems like from a young age with the lack of representation from darker skinned women it makes young black girls think negatively of themselves uh, this plays a role in like how women feel the need to bleach their skin. Um, we all know those stories. But just in particular, the children, if you're not seeing representation of how you look, then you feel like you're not pretty, you don't look like them, there's something wrong with you. So I just see that pattern. I mean, we see it all over social media of where little girls feel like, you know, they're crying because they're like, I want to look like this person. And almost always that person is way lighter than them or even white so it just you know shows that how much representation matters um and furthermore according to black and beautiful a content analysis and, and study of colorism and strides towards inclusivity in the cosmetics industry it reported that children's early perceptions that skin color is tied to the to ability and status may be shaped in part by the enduring legacy of colorism in children's media. And when I saw this, it really reminded me of like dolls in the store. Mm -hmm. And with representation, it just it just shows you if, if you don't like see what you normally see, then it's gonna affect your outlook. I mean, with the dolls, you can tell me if this is true, but when I was younger, I remember going to the store and wanting a doll and I would see that all the dolls were white or mm -hmm. if they were um, black, they were lighter skinned. So I was always discouraged or the darker skinned uh, dolls had um, long or wavy hair. It never really looked like a, a dark skinned woman with like those like Afrocentric features. So I definitely see how that like affects people because like even to this day, I'm just like, wow, look at the progression. But there's still still so many issues. What do you think? Yeah, I agree, especially with the doll thing. Like, I remember I got, like, my first dark-skinned doll when I was, like, nine. Mm -hmm. And even she had, like, the long, wavy yep. hair, kind of, and not, like, the natural hair that most dark-skinned women have. So, yeah, I thought that was really interesting, looking back on it. 
And also in the same research article that I stated above, it found that the cosmetic industry, um, namely foundation using frequencies and the results indicated that lighter shades N equal 267. And then it had like a whole different range of different shades and it slowly was just decreasing. But when we got to the black shades, N equal 31. So we have 267 compared to 31. So that's like, that's a huge, huge, huge difference. It's like, it just goes to show like when we go to the store and finding makeup, there's so many lighter shades, so, so many. You'll be like, wow, how can like, there be so many different, you know, lighter shades, but darker skin shades, there's like maybe a handful of bottles. And it's like every, you know, with the whole undertones and everyone's complexion is different. Everyone can't fit in that one bottle. Mm -hmm. That's why some people look ashy or it looks too dark for them because it's not their color. But people are with the, you know, the biases and stereotypes. It just shows that we're forced to believe that like all black, like, you know what I'm trying to say? It's right. like, like not it's just, all black people have the same complexion. Right. And it's like, there's variety. There's a spectrum. So... That's just one interesting thing. An that umbrella, if you will. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just, yeah. 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 Um, so according to a different study of African-American women, um, many of them felt a sense of otherness and invisibility, as well as it had issues with self-esteem because of the representation of dark-skinned people which, as we mentioned, is usually negative. Um, Dark-skinned women in the media are usually sexual objects, they're enslaved, or they're criminals, and they found that colorism may lead to negative self-evaluations and therefore low self-esteem among African Americans with dark skin. So, I mean, that just goes to show how powerful colorism is in, mm -hmm. in African American women and the negative effects that it can have on them psychologically, emotionally, and yeah, what do you think? You said it all. <laughs> like, there's not much to say. I mean, that's that's basically it, especially to the sexualization. Like, I see that. We see that so much, like, all the time. I mean, we said it earlier, how we view, how, like, darker skin young girls will view themselves and stuff. It's all, you know, all this plays a role, so I think it just really goes to show like all this matters so and that's a wrap um please comment what your thoughts are on colorism in the media and if you have ever been impacted by colorism while you're at it please share the video and sign our petition title titled stop the colorism is 2022 thank you thank you